You're listening to Minor Talk On Demand exclusively on 600 ESPN El Paso. Stay up to date with Minor Talk by downloading the free 600 ESPN El Paso mobile app. All right, we are live. Minor Talk is here, presented by the Oscar Arieta Agency. Hey, if you're looking for home, auto, life insurance, trust the local experts at the Oscar Arieta Agency. They can help you out, and they've got a great customer service team. The thing I love about working with the Oscar Arieta Agency is there's no drama. There's no headaches. You call their phone line up, 915-400-6000, and a real person will be able to help you out. There's no 1-800 number. It's not like you're working with a huge company out there. It's a locally owned company, the Oscar Arieta the Agency. They've got agents here to serve you with when it comes to your home, auto, life, or even your business commercial insurance needs. Trust the local experts at the Oscar Arieta the Agency and learn more online at Oscar Arieta the Agency. Dot com. Well, I want to open up the phone lines right away. 915-505-6009. That's our telephone number. 600 ESPN El Paso on Twitter and X. There's a lot to get into on this show today. Uh, UTEP defeating Florida International. Uh, the score was 83-76. I, don't, I think the score is uh, much closer than this game actually felt, although maybe some of the naysayers would argue that they didn't like the way that they closed uh, UTEP closed this ga- game out. Um, Joe Golding even said that. He thought uh, the play was Way too sloppy, uh, but let's let's peel that back. I mean, forget all of that. This team went on a 16-0 run to start this game off. 16 nothing. Uh, the stand for defense. Fans were standing forever for o- almost eight minutes. Uh, I didn't even think that Florida International could get to 10 points in the first half the way things were going. It, UTEP just had them on lockdown defensively and I think UTEP forced something like 11 turnovers in less than 10 minutes to start things off in the first half, Sal. And you know the interesting thing about this UTEP basketball team is their defense has always done this. They've always uh, turned people over and and the way that they started off that 16-0 run, I mean, you never look back from that. That's They had leads by as much as 26 points in this game, 63-37. to It was an absolute killing at points in this game. And I'm not going to, hey, I'm not going to really hold on to the end of this game and, you know, think about that too much. I'm going to hold on to the part where UTEP would look dominant and they've won three straight going into Huntsville, uh, Alabama for the Conference USA Tournament. It's all a matter of perspective, right? Let, let's flip the roles and, and say, hey, how many times has UTEP gotten out to a to a big hole, you know, 16 nothing, or, or, you know, they're scoreless for how many minutes? And then, you know, they start fighting and clawing their way back, but it's it's just too late, though. You, you don't get credit for that late attempt because of that poor performance in the very beginning. That's been UTEP before. Flip it around. Now it's, now it, you're on the other side of that. You force that drought and the other team, you know, starts catching fire near the end, but you did majority of your work within the first 10, 15 minutes. Dug them in a really, really uh, tough place to uh, climb themselves out of. They did, they did that. So, in my opinion, they earned, you know, those the right to, um, uh, uh, get a pass, I should say. Not play the way they did, but get a pass for the final couple of minutes because they've been on the other side of, of that for a while. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, man. Hey, our telephone number, 915-505-6009. Alberto Reta is in the house, and he was also at the game. Uh, Alberto, you give me your first reactions to this one. Uh, Miners get a big victory tonight on senior night, and for this team, they get to honor uh, Z- uh, Zid Powell, Tay Hardy, Calvin Solomon, Jonathan DeSanjos, and Tay Hardy. I mean, it's, it was the Tay Hardy game. He just played out of his mind in this matchup. Yeah, he, he played phenomenally well, a, a, a great way to close out your, your season at the Don Haskins or your career at the Don Haskins, and and there's no better person to have a game like that than than Tay Hardy. You know, he, he played 62 games in a minor uniform, and he started all but one. He could have sat out several games this one, this one this season as he was injured, and he, he decided to battle through it, so that was what I really liked, and, and I really liked the way the, the minors finished their season, obviously, so that gives people a little bit of hope but to me uh, one of my bigger takeaways from that first half was yeah the miners started 16 and 2 but the ha- but they went into the half uh, 40 to 26 so that means after starting 16 to 2 both teams sc- score 24 points and that's how we go into the half so after starting extremely hot things kind of level out for the miners and the, yeah they rode that that lead that they had built a significant amount of the rest of the way but it started looking scary at the end. Glad they closed it out. 
and glad the seniors all got involved and had a game that they're like, that was us, and, and, yeah. and now we can move this to Huntsville. Yeah, and so now the thought is, okay, so we've asked people on Twitter next, 600 ESPN will pass, so you can vote on this poll right now. Uh, simply put, wh- where are you at with this UTEP basketball team right now? They've won three straight going into the conference tournament. Prior to this three-game win streak, they lost four straight. How are you feeling about this UTEP men's basketball team as they head to the Conference USA Tournament? You heard from Voice of the Miners, John Teicher, and we talked about it. We speculated all week, and I think the we got people confused, maybe. That's probably what we did. Uh, but the big games that I'm circling and that uh, held so much stock in the end of the conference season – It included the Tuesday loss from Liberty against Middle Tennessee. The Blue Raiders defeating the Flames in that game does wonders for the Miners to try to lock in a four possibly seed, maybe most likely a five seed when it's all said and done, although it depends on what happens because Middle Tennessee has La Tech on Saturday. I I think Middle Tennessee is losing that one, no doubt about it in my mind, Sal. So the way it's looking like right now, if we had to play the guessing game and we had to just look at what's ahead, for the Conference USA uh, you know, tournament out in Huntsville, Alabama. It's looking like UTEP versus Middle Tennessee first round. Isn't that interesting, Sal? Because two years ago, UTEP had Middle Tennessee and they had them on the wire. They had this team beat. And that was the team with Sule Boom, Keontae Kennedy, Jamal Biennemi, you name it. That was like the eight steal game or something for Sule, right? He, he, he played out, like of his, yeah. out of his mind in that game. He played out of his mind. And they lost that game uh, in a really hard-fought overtime loss. 66-59 was the final. Um, they had an opportunity with the ball before end of regulation to try to win that game. They won the first one in that Conference USA tournament that year against Old Dominion. In fact, last year, uh, they were a one and done. They lost in the first round against Western Kentucky, 73-67. to This time around, it could be Middle Tennessee, the first matchup for them. The 4-5 matchup, and that could be uh, Thursday, March 14th, uh, if that ends up being the case. Now, Sal, I don't know. I mean, as far as matchup goes, and as far as matchup's concerned, what do you think about this one? UTEP taking on Middle Tennessee, a team that we've talked a lot about this entire season. Middle Tennessee to see they've had higher expectations uh this year but i don't know if they lived up to those high expectations they're 13 and 17 to close out right now they have one more game saturday they could probably finish up uh 13 and 18 overall seven and nine in conference play it's a disappointing finish for the blue raiders who had a lot of hope this season yeah definitely one of the um one of if not the top pick for conference usa from a lot of you know the uh the basketball experts so to speak, and hasn't panned out this way. Kind of reminiscent to uh, Western Kentucky of last year. That That's kind of what it reminds me of, you know, just all the uh, preseason hype and the talent is definitely there. Just hasn't gone in the favor that they've, uh, that they would have hoped. But if we're being real too, Adrian, Miners could be 2-0 and against them. Yeah, they you know sh- I mean? and they probably should be, right? So they, they got to go into that game um, as if they're the better team. They got to think it at least, especially coming off of a game where um, they, they kind of gave Middleton to see that game. They got to go into that game, potentially, right, with uh, with that same mentality that they went into tonight with, with a game that they dropped to a team they shouldn't have dropped it to. Yeah, have that kind of chip on your shoulder, you to. something to prove kind of thing. And, um, you know, this team right now, they're, they're playing – they're playing at their best. I mean, that first half was really solid. Set up. You know, the whole game in that Liberty road game, that was really solid for this basketball team. So if you're a UTEP optimist, then you're thinking, man, this stretch is really positive right here. Maybe they could do something. So we've got the minor talk poll up right now, and here are the following options, okay? Uh, Are you cautiously optimistic? Are you still out on this team? Do you think UTEP will make a run in conference play, or are they a one-and-done in Alabama? You could vote at 600 ESPN El Paso on Twitter and X. Or you could call in 915-505-6009 and give your reason below. Uh, Right now, cautiously optimistic is leading the way 44% of the votes. Uh, Then 30% of the votes say UTEP will make a run. One and done in Alabama is 20% of the votes. And then uh, 6% of the votes say that they are still out on this team. So I think listeners and fans of this basketball program are uh, pretty optimistic, at least of what they've seen in the 
last three games. Let's uh, go to what's going on on Twitter, 600 ESPN El Paso. Um, that's where we're going r- right now. But before we do that, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to the Minor Talk brought to you by the Oscar Arieta Agency. More or less than 10 seconds here on 600 ESPN El Paso. Hey, uh, big news today out of Conference USA, Sam Houston State winning at La Tech, clinching a share of the conference title and a top seed in the conference tournament next week. Why does this matter right here? Well, uh, if you're somebody who cares about Conference USA awards, uh, Chris Mudge for Sam Houston State, he is a shoe in first year head coach taking over from, uh, you know, Jason Hooten. And he has this kind of success in Sam Houston State. Crown him already. Coach of the year at Sam Houston State. Uh, what an accomplishment for this team to do it in just year one of the conference. Now let's go over to why this, what this means for UTEP. Sam Houston State's going to be the number one seed. They're going to play the winner of the 8-9 seed, which is probably going to be, I mean, barring any unforeseen uh, craziness, it's probably going to be New Mexico State and FIU. Uh, if it's not them, then Jacksonville State could slide in that mix, and it could be Jacksonville State versus FIU. Uh, but what this also means is the fact that Sam Houston State has to take on one of those teams, and the winner uh, of that game, they will actually play the winner if UTEP ends up getting that 4 or 5 seed. They'll play, have to play each other, and that would be a March 15th matchup. Uh, and it, that's, it's actually an early matchup. Sal, how about this? It'll be a 12.30 local time, 11.30 wow. a.m. time over there. CBS Sports Network will have that one. Uh, so that will be uh, nationally televised. Semifinals, potentially UTEP, Sam Houston State. I'm going to tell you something, Sal. I like the matchup. Uh, I know we've talked matchups a lot, and maybe we sound contradictory at times. If you run back some uh, minor talk tape, you might not like what I'm saying here. But the reason I like this matchup is um, simply because, and I've heard this from a lot of people, so I'm actually stealing this. Thank you, Steve Kaplowitz. Thank you, Hunter Pennypacker, for this one as well. Hard to beat a team three times. And, yeah. and Sam Houston State swept UTEP this season, um, but in a nothing to lose, everything to gain uh, situation, semifinal round March fifteenth, could UTEP have a chance in the semifinal rounds against uh, Sam Houston State team? Looking that far ahead, assuming it, you know the stars align that way, they they can have a chance. And I say this because they had a chance in um, in Huntsville. When, when they were on sure. the road over there, it was a, a close one that, um, you know, at the under eight mark, Sam Houston was just able to uh, to put it away. They showed their experience. It was 60 to 58. That was the final score. And a lot of these scores in Conference USA um, that we've been seeing within the last week or so, these these games look close. But when you watch the full game, it really isn't. Team just happened to get some uh, some garbage points, so to speak. But that wasn't the case over there in Huntsville. UTEP dropped that one. So going off of that, they do have a chance. However... Um, they're 0-2 against Sam Houston this year for a reason. That's a, that's a team who, um, I mean, they're first place in this conference for a reason. Manny David chimes in on Twitter and X. Great first half, especially the great game for Tay Hardy. FIU fought back and made it too close at the end. Still, the Miners came out with a win. Plenty of time to prep for the conference tournament. Hashtag go Miners. Hashtag defend the dawn. Hashtag minor talk. Poncho. UTEP men's basketball got lucky with tonight's win. Joe Golding got outcoached in the second half. How do you lose such a a huge lead? The old referee needs to retire. He made some terrible calls tonight. Hashtag minor talk. Uh, Yeah, that crew who uh, hangs around UTEP, I'm not discriminating by the old man or anything like that. Um... No, that that crew is awful. I mean, it's just awful. That's all I'm going to say. There was some. They, they just let it get out of hand in the end. I thought that game should have been over 10, Man. 15 minutes. I mean, Sal, that la- those last two, three minutes were ridiculous. And uh, you know what? Jeremy Ballard, uh, head coach over at Florida International, he called way too many late timeouts. This game was so out of reach, man. Yeah, and, and that's part of the reason why uh, the score looks a lot closer than it was. I mean, FIU had a solid run, but they were just in too big of a, too big of a deficit to get back and another thing that attributes to UTEP um, you know sarcastically as I'm doing my air quotes here only winning by the amount they did they were poor from the free throw line too only 14 of 25 so yeah. both, both teams combining for 52 free throws that that adds to the delay and in, in action yeah. but you not being efficient from the free throw line is the difference between um, even though you win you know winning by seven versus you know 13 14 15. 
I'll tell you this, I didn't like the 23 turnovers that the Miners had, and um, you know, you can pretty much highlight most of those being in the second half, 14 of those turnovers being in the second half, so there you go, there's your, there's your stat right there as far as turnovers go for the Miners and kind of what hurt them there, uh, but they forced 18, and I, I really like that, I mean, especially the first half where they forced 16, I don't like the second half where they only forced 2, uh, but that first half performance defensively, that's one of the top ones you'll see. I think this is really recency bias that's why we don't we're not flooded with calls right away and people aren't necessarily uh glowing with excitement but i still take more of the positives from this one than the negatives i i'm i'm not on the side of like hey this is too sloppy for me to feel good about utep going into the conference tournament do i feel great about them going into huntsville no but do i feel like they've got momentum like they haven't had in the last month of course i mean you want to be playing your best type of basketball right now it sounds so cliche and so over you you know, overstated, uh, but it's just the reality. I mean, look at Tay Hardy in this performance tonight. Sal and I had to do some digging, and it was really just Sal. He had to do some digging based on what I was texting him. Uh, Tay Hardy goes off for 26 points. He explodes with six three-pointers. I'm thinking to myself, wait a second, are we getting into <laughs> record territory? Uh, Sal, you, you uncovered some really cool numbers for UTEP all-time uh, single-game three-point leaders in uh, UTEP history. The really cool stat was that this is <laughs> flooded with legends. It's also flooded with uh, recent players who, is, who have starred for the minors. Uh, give us the rundown of this list right here. This is all-time three-point makes in a single game at UTEP. All right, so uh, just forewarning, one guy is listed five times when it comes to this list, but in first place, it's a tie between Randy Culpepper on January 23rd against Randy Culpepper of February 13th because who who are you going to choose with nine threes? So he's uh, first place, tied for first place, and who's right behind Randy Culpepper? Randy Culpepper with eight three-pointers. Uh, you know, he's listed third. Uh, he is tied with Daryl Edwards, though. He had uh, eight three-pointers. That was on February 22nd. We talked about Daryl Edwards, uh, you know, earlier today. Miguel Ayala with uh, seven, and uh, Randy Culpepper with seven twice. Dominic Artis, Dion Barrett. That's another that's a name Barrett. for it. Yeah, Dion <laughs> Barrett. And then uh, JB, Jamal Enemy, February of uh, 2022. So uh, Miguel Ayala, Culpepper, Artis, Barrett, and... And be enemy with seven. Um, pretty cool list, man. It's fun because it, it takes you down memory lane a bit and uh, remembering some of those highlights from those guys. Yeah, the Dion Barrett mention is just the guy who doesn't fit in the mix, right? I mean, like everybody else is uh, guys who've just really came onto the scene and were amazing for UTEP. I mean, let's just call it what it was. I mean, you talk about guys like Jamal B. Enemy, such a difference maker for this basketball team. And I'm not saying any knock against Dion Barrett, but he came off the bench. I mean, he was this 5'10, uh, you know, young young player who played under uh, head coach Tim Floyd and he really reminded me of Evan Gilliard minus the skill set that Gilliard had as far as like a on-ball guard. I mean, Dion Barrett was more of an off-ball guard, uh, but that's a great name, Dion Barrett. Um, I'm happy that we even mentioned somebody's name like that. Now, the interesting part about all of that list that you just mentioned was Randy Culpepper, man. He was so ahead of his time. And I think that record is going to eventually be broken. I'm, I see it UTEP. To, yeah. yeah, I see UTEP having a player who explodes for 10 three pointers um, in a game and, you know, beats that record. But it really is an indication of how ahead of Randy Cul- how ahead of his time Randy Culpepper really was. I mean, if he was in 2024 college basketball. Forget about it, man. A three-point specialist off-ball guard like Randy Culpepper who could do everything, score at all three levels, and play uh, top-notch defense is just your all-around player. I mean, this guy's probably getting drafted in the NBA. And I think that at the time, I remember yeah. uh, you know, watching uh, Randy Culpepper growing up, thinking to myself, if this guy doesn't get drafted, something's wrong. And you know what? To his credit, it's not like he's had any kind of a bad career. He's had a um, you know a ten plus year career playing international basketball, making a lot of money and making a name for himself out there. He's actually he retired uh, recently playing out in Egypt, but then he unretired and he's now in <laughs> Qatar. Uh, you know, signing another contract. So um, Randy Culpepper, man, RC three Hooper. I, I I just sent it to you. I was like RC three, yeah. thinking that he was of course the the leader of this list. And not only is he the leader, but he holds multiple uh, spots on this list right here. He was. 
such a highlight reel. I mean, there, there's so many of them that you can think of. The my favorite, and I remember because th- this came out on Sports Center. Uh, which one didn't? But it was the game against Richmond, and um, I think it was the CBI or something along the lines of that. They were on the road in Richmond, and the DMV year in and year out, they have amazing teams. There's like four or five of them who, um, uh, you know, can make noise in a tournament just about every year. But um, that was a big highlight. That's when uh, Richmond was one of the uh, more uh, I don't want to say powerful, but notable and respectable uh, mid majors in that frame, and to do it on a big stage and, and get the um, you know the top ten prowess, so to speak, that was awesome, man. So I, I think a lot about those things. But another thing that comes to mind too was uh, not too long ago, you and I were on were on Twitter when it was Twitter. I think we sent it to each other at the same time. Like, did you see Kevin Durant talk about Randy Culpepper when it yes. comes to favorite dunkers or something like that? So, I mean, that just shows the legend of Randy Culpepper. So, yeah, if, if he was here, NIL's got to do something. Oh, man. <laughs> something, man. He would, he would be breaking the bank. You, you, we talk a lot about the UTEP NIL Collective. They would have had to start a Randy Culpepper NIL Collective here at UTEP. Culpepper just, coins. Yes, yeah. to just fund uh, him staying here at UTEP in order for them to keep him. I found the game, Sal. CBI tournament semifinals. Man, your memory is amazing. 81-69 was the victory for the Miners that year. 2009. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, Stefan Jackson led the way in scoring for the Miners. 34 points and a young Randy Culpepper off the bench. 33 minutes. 6 for 15. Couldn't take him out in this game. 19 points off the bench. Only two turnovers as a young buck and also contributed with three steals. I mean, man, talk about production uh one of the all-time greats i mean that's that's what i'll say right there from randy culpepper and so uh to tie it all back to the 2024 Sorry, yeah. <laughs> season uh as we're reminiscing about the, the great randy culpepper um to tie it all the way back i mean tay hardy at six uh, three-pointers it, i was thinking to myself we could be seeing a career night he was killing it tonight for the miners and it really was a career night for him five assists three rebounds he was involved all over the place tay hardy could have easily uh been selfish and tried to get to 30 plus 40 plus whatever it was but he was getting his other players involved and he was doing it while having fun i mean he had 32 minutes of action he was throwing all sorts of crazy passes and stuff like that and tay hardy uh you know he deserved a game like this he he was utep's best player all season long i questioned that at times this year but you know what uh it's true he is their best player they run through tay hardy it feels like he is just playing um with a lot of uh weight on his shoulders and that's okay i think he's ready to take on this and shoulder the burden i love the fact that his family came out tonight uh to watch him for senior night and sal tay hardy definitely needs his own flowers we gave all the flowers to randy culpepper Mm -hmm. we talked about tay hardy before on sports talk before uh the broadcast and uh again i'll just say it he was a very valuable piece to utep over the past two years and, and won't be forgotten yeah a guy who's always been in the mix when he's out there on the floor and somebody who's not afraid to uh you know just get dirty out there and, and do the uh, do the hard stuff and if anything since Golding's been here um, I'm, no comparison in terms of skill set obviously different players but um, Sule Boom is one guy who I think was the most um, the most blue collar player under coach Golding and r- right next to him would be uh, Tay Hardy so that that's what I think of a guy who who is going to be in the mix for a game plan. And he plays these minutes for a reason. So, uh, yeah, blue-collar guy all the way. I like the description. Minor Talk poll is going on right now. How do you feel about the team going into the conference tournament? Reply with your reason below right now. Cautiously optimistic, taking the lead. 44% of the votes right there. Then UTEP will make a run. It has 29% of the votes. One and done in Alabama has almost 20% of the votes. Still out on this team. That's the worst one. Only 6% of the votes. So I would say, Alberto, most fans right now are cautiously optimistic. They don't want to tell anybody. They don't want to be on minor talk having somebody uh, run back their phone call if they're wrong. Uh, but fans are cautiously optimistic as the Miners go to Huntsville. Yeah, I think that that's the way to uh, approach this conference tournament, and you kind of spoke on it a little bit when you were talking about this minor team and how they played today. It's They're out there having fun and just playing the game, and, and it looks like they've forgotten about all the trials and tribulations kind of that they've gone through before this and all the mistakes that they've made. They're just kind of 
out there just having fun. I was about to say something I can't say on radio. Um, no, they're just out there having fun. And to me, the way I approach it and the way other people should approach it is just one game at a time. Don't focus on the number of games you have to win or, or how many you have to string together. Focus only on this one, on this game that you have coming up, and, and that'll, that'll, that'll help you. Um, or in my opinion, that'll help your, your, your hopes stay at a reasonable level. And the way I'm kind of gauging this, this conference tournament is, is by looking at the others, the, the ones that have already started. You know, I was watching some Sunbelt tournament earlier. Number 11 ranked Texas State. They defeated Southern Miss, who were ranked sixth. So things can happen, and, and I can go through these, and, and there'll be more where the lower-seeded team, they went out, and they put up a good performance, and they beat that higher-seeded team, and it, it, that's what it's about. Just take it at one, one game at a time, go out there, have fun, play the ball you know how to play, tune out everything else, and, and, and good things will happen. I think that's what the Miners did today, and if they do that again, they'll have a great chance to, to win. Oh, well, I think they'll have a chance to yeah, – I like your idea. Be narrow-focus and, and just focus at the task at hand. If they focus on their 4-5 or five matchup, then that's fine. I mean, yeah, that's all you need to do. It's like Golding says. It's winning that first one's the toughest one, and then having the momentum after. That's all you really need. Eddie Morello super excited for today's edition of Minor Talk after closing out the regular season with a winning record, 16-15. and 15. Am I correct? You are correct, Eddie, and I appreciate you listening, man. Thanks for weighing in on the show. Yeah, Joe Golding, back-to-back, uh, he is not going to have back-to-back losing seasons, Sal. Last year, they were 14-18. and 18. This year, they had, have at least locked in, at minimum, a 500 record. Even if they bow out first round of the conference tournament, they'll still have a 500 record. They could have an even better record uh, over 500 if they're able to get a win in the conference tournament right there. So uh, what do you – does that mean mm. a lot to you does that does that say uh does that you know evaluating this team historically having back-to-back losing seasons and uh, being able to avoid that with the late uh surge in the season three straight in a row does that mean something to you there's two ways i can answer this i'll answer it the first way i think it means something when you consider the recent history of what utep basketball has been and just the lack of success you you want to start out somewhere and you know people can look at the the overall history of of utep basketball and see what it really means and you know look at some glory days and say this is not acceptable these are this doesn't fit the standard but utep hasn't been that in so long so you could look at it like meaning something there, but on the other side too, I'm looking at it from from the glass of they played three teams that they really shouldn't even have played. They they wound up playing them. They were on the schedule, but I see this as a 13 and 15 team. I don't see them as the 16 and 15 team. University of Science and Arts at Oklahoma is not in Conference USA. As bad as CUSA is this year, they're not there. Who else did they play? McMurray, McMurray. Western New Mexico. Like, come Correct. on now. So it, it's hard for me to to really count those because um, I can't. I said it earlier in the year. I can't count them. I still can't count them. So I, I just got to stick to it. However, yeah, yeah um, I mean, if, if they get on a run and start to do other things, and you know, for sure, definitely credit's given right now the way that they're playing. But I, I can't. You know, be on the side of the uh, of the 500 record when with those three games out there. Yeah, that's fair. I think that if you want to be somebody who's very, um, I guess, exact, then you're saying, yeah, UTEP's got over a winning record. But like Sal said, you you start to pull out your magnifying glass and start to see some of those early season wins. Those aren't against D1 opponents. So good point there, Sal. Let's uh, keep things moving on Twitter next. 600 ESPN El Paso and hashtag Minor Talk or uh, chime in on our free mobile app, 600 ESPN El Paso, by the way. Trey Chauvin, I have a feeling that the Miners might go dancing. They're playing with confidence. Uh, Noah at the Noah G. Great student turnout tonight. This fan base continues to show up for this team. Great way to send them off to Huntsville, Alabama. Hashtag Minor Talk. Good point, Noah. I mean, 5,000 plus. Uh, Alberto and I were saying it to ourselves. Great crowd. I mean, it's a Thursday night. It's spring break. Not a lot of stuff to do here on a weeknight. And I'm happy that families and people across El Paso chose the Don Haskins Center as their night of uh, leisure. You know, their night out here in in spring break. I love that. Yeah, and it was uh, obviously a family affairs a, a lot of uh, kids out there and they enjoyed that game and I think that yeah. the performance that the Miners put on where they started
start off hot, but they, they and, and then they kind of slow down, but they win the game nonetheless. That was phenomenal to see for all the fans because, like, we, like we've been saying, a lot of them have kind of lost a little hope. So to see that right before conference play, I, I think that kind of revitalizes some of them, not all of them. And um, it was just a, a really fun environment in, at the Don Haskins. I hadn't felt that in a while, probably since maybe that NMSU game, and that's just because that NMSU game was absolutely full. There wasn't that many people there. Yeah, and then the last home game was a loss. So yeah, and those so, are awful, right? So yeah, it's it's great to close the season out at home with a win. Send your your your, your seniors out like that. So not much complaining. I did see, and, and this was interesting to watch a couple of the of the game worn jerseys that were auctioned off. I did see two of them. Both those of them are sweet. signed. They were really sweet, and seeing them both of them signed by the corresponding player that's phenomenal. I don't know how many other institutions that are D one institutions. Can you have that, you know, where, where people have such accessibility to the players right after the game? And, and you know, Brett Broomquist, Brett Broomquist from the El Paso Times, he gets really frustrated because he wants the press conference to start and guys are out there taking pictures with every, every <laughs> fan and, and, and he's out there wanting the, the press conference. So I really enjoy that, that, that the fans go out there and meet the guys in the tunnel and, and start yelling and guys are saying, Hans. And so I think that was great for the team. And to get their hopes up, that that's really – Come on, Bloomy, you could wait. Come on, man. We, we got you on that. Uh, Cesar Cubillos, uh, well, like my high school girlfriend, this game wasn't pretty. Free throws, <laughs> let FIU get close at the end. I'll miss a, a Tay Hardy's game next year. It's not how you start, but how you finish. So I hope the this carries into Alabama. See you in Huntsville next week. You know what's so funny is that that saying is ultimately true. Like, we're all in agreement, right? It's not how you start, it's how you finish. In the grand scheme of things, yes, but tonight in this game, it's how they started, not how they finished. Yeah, it's, it's definitely how they started. That's The 16-0 run propelled them forward. Jacob Matthew, dear basketball gods, please let me be completely wrong about Joe Golding and the Miners. From Jacob. This is from Romeo AF. Why not us? Weakest league in a while. But I have a feeling we'll have our hearts broken in the Conference USA Championship somehow. Now, okay, Sal, let me just ask you this. quick, like, like Just quick question. First run, one and done or conference tournament lose in the end. What's your what's what would you rather have? Uh, tournament lose in the end. Just watch as much basketball as possible, man. I don't want to get, get your it heart up. broken. It's March. How can and you get not- your heart broken like that? We're, we're, okay. We would have to run it back Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's like uh, instant death or death by a thousand <laughs> cuts. <laughs> Let me bleed. I know. I, what do you think, Alberta? How would you answer that? I don't. I I, I take this unique approach, and, and I know it's not going to happen. But I'd rather watch them go to the final and, and, and lose in a okay, close game. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna mark this one right the here, thing guys. Is, okay, I, I'm I mark hope this. that that would like a close game in the final where the miners lose would kind of put their name up a little higher on the list for maybe an at, at large bid which is extremely hopeful but at know, large bid in what the nit or the cbi or the anything, cit anything not in the ncaa get, get tournament dance, yeah it's, it's not in the NCAA NCAA tournament. Oklahoma science arts invitational <laughs> yes now, it's not gonna be come on D2 man basketball no i just ba- I, it'll be in the basketball classic possibly i hope they play some playoff basketball of some sort so yeah, uh, hope- me too i I'm, I'm on the same train man i've what i was like what 12, 13 when UTEP last went to the NCAA tournament. So, yeah, I would like to see a crazy run, especially in a year where, uh, just like Romeo AF is saying, weakest league in a while. This conference, I mean, look, it's a newcomer in Sam Houston State who's winning the conference. No knock to them. But I'm saying, these teams are beatable. La Tech showed today they're beatable. I mean, Sal, uh, Sam Houston State, that game wasn't that close. The Bearcats pretty much oh, handled yeah. the Bulldogs in that game. Yeah, the, the score looks close, but they had a double Double digit lead in the in the final five minutes or so, and there was an impressive run by La Tech. We we can't discredit that. It was like um, seventeen to two or something like that. But that just goes to show you that Sam Houston built up that much of a lead in the final moments to uh, sure. they, they they were able to afford to to play like that. And even then too, when when La Tech was making their run and Sam Houston was going to the line or they, there was some play that benefited them, they were able to answer on those possessions. When you when you're on the other end end of a 17 to 2 run but you're calm at the line I know that's insane and that tells you a lot about this team I mean even though there it's a new quote-unquote coach and a new quote-unquote regime 
I mean, they play like they've played uh, together for a long time. Joe Golding gave them a lot of credit in the post game interview, by the way. And by the, and also Joe Golding informed uh, voice of the minor Sean Teicher and Steve Yellen. He's hitting the road tomorrow. He's going to go watch KJ Thomas, uh, the new acquisition. I should say the new signee. Uh, who has already signed his NLI to pl- uh, to play at UTEP next year. He's a senior, um, and he is playing in the state semifinals of the Texas Boys Basketball Playoffs. Uh, Joe Golding and his wife are going to go watch him tomorrow, so that's a really cool thing in itself. And I love the fact that uh, you know UTEP's getting a player like that who's playing at literally the highest level of uh, you know Texas high school basketball. Aaron Peterson. Can't watch the game live, but based on Twitter highlights, I'm seeing these miners are playing like they have something to prove with an edge that we haven't seen in a while. This is coming in right now from Pancho. Uh, actually, I read this one from earlier. This is coming in right now from Tristan Pence. First off, congratulations to the seniors tonight. All four had stellar games. The miners showed up tonight with great energy and swagger. The final 10 minutes is concerning, though. UTEP will have to finish games stronger to make a run in the conference tournament hashtag minor talk he also says this tristan continues the cusa tournament truly is up in the air the miners finishing with a top five seed is a huge improvement from where they were two weeks ago which was like an eighth or ninth seed. The my uh, Tristan continues by saying this: the miners have the athleticism and the depth to make a legitimate run. Playing with intense and high energy defense will be key next week. That's coming in from Tristan P- uh, Pence. I appreciate it, Tristan. Um, I saw you out there today. I appreciate you. Uh, let's keep things moving. Nine one five five zero five six zero zero nine. Let's hop out to the phone lines right now and welcome onto the show, Pinky. He is not considered, or he's not to be. Considered confused with Pinkney, who is on uh, FIU today. What's up, Pinky? How are you? What's up? What's up, Adrian? It's not Pinky. It's George. Oh, I'm sorry, George. What's going on, man? No uh, worries. But thanks for the compliment, though. <laughs> uh, we were just we were just so excited. I, we were so excited that it was Pinky that we were ready to start talking about Pinkney. But now I'm e- equally excited that it's you, George. Uh, you got a chance to hear this one tonight. UTEP getting a win against Florida International. Where are you as a fan? Are you glass half full, cautiously optimistic? Where are you on this team? You know what? After after these three, uh, you know, pretty good wins. Uh, the only thing I, I'm a, a little about optimistic, but I'm still a little um, on on the fence on this one, only because yeah, the the last ten minutes of this game really concerns me, and it, it's been kind of like the the mo of this team where they they find a way to to get out of the game. The the there was a tale of, of two halves. I mean, the first half they were on fire. I mean, Trey uh, Tay. Went up for, for threes. Everybody was just firing on all cylinders. They come out in the second half, and they did really well. But, I mean, I just think they fizzled out, and they weren't as concentrated um, as they were in the first half. They, they were on fire, man. And, I mean, it, sure. it went, I think the lead went up to 26 points at one point. And to make it uh, go down, and, and it's been their M.O. all season long. They, they find a way to lose games, and, and that's what they need to stop doing. They need to stop, you know, easing up on the gas and, and put the pedal to the metal and, and let, it, let it all lie where, it, you know, let it all hang out. I thought that's what they were doing in the first half, George. I thought that's what, I thought this was going to be like a ninety-five to ten score. Like I really thought this was going to be the case—a thirty-point game, twenty-five point game, whatever you want. And I think the end, you know, you could chalk it up to a lot of things. You could chalk it up to uh, a lack of execution offensively. You could lack it, uh, chalk it up to the turnovers that really started to mount and pile up. Uh, but the point is, like you said, they they just got to close out better. And I'm not going to knock them too much because of that. Uh, where are you? At? That, though do you knock them with that and do you kind of have some concerns going into the tournament well you know having 48 turnovers from this one team 25 in in florida and then another 23 yesterday uh and, and let alone just in the second half was where they did that complete turnaround that's what i mean i mean they need to stay consistent they need a they need to finish strong and and they need they need to just uh Trust in each other and 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 uh, not be so laxing, especially when they value the ball. If they value the ball like they did in the first half, 
I think they're unbeatable because they they were they were they showed me a different side of this team and and what they can be, you know, when when they all play together. Okay, I like it, man. Hey, George, I appreciate the phone call. Thanks for weighing in on the program with us, and uh, always great to hear from you. I really appreciate your perspective. 915-505-6009 if you want to follow that call up. 600 ESPN El Paso on Twitter and 600 ESPN El Paso online on our free uh, mobile app. Um, We're continuing talking about this one right here. Uh, I still um, am asking, or we're asking people on social media in our Minor Talk poll, UTEP basketball has won now three straight going into the conference tournament. Before this, they lost four in a row. How do you feel about the team going into the conference tournament? Are you cautiously optimistic, still out on this team, thinking UTEP will make a run, or are they one and done in Alabama? Right now, as it stands, fans are feeling pretty good about this team. 42% of the fans say cautiously optimistic, and now it's starting to rise. 30 3% of the votes have said UTEP will make a run. So fans feel a little bit better um, about this team right now. This is coming in from Richard J at Chipper Sen. This is uh, what what he uh, chimes in with us on Twitter and X. Is there any chance that we get Kevin Kalu to suit up as a left tackle next year? His footwork is on another level. Sal, uh, Otis Pitts, right tackle. Kevin Callu, left tackle. Cade McConnell, quarterback. Tay Hardy, running back. No, no. David Terrell, running back. All right. I I like the David Terrell, running back (laughs) a little bit better. What do you think? Oh, man. You know what? Why not? Why not? Hey, Kalu had a good game today. This is a like a stretch right here with Kalu. This is like mad Kalu. So anybody who's had stock on Kalu, aka Sal Montes, uh, <laughs> you can you can have a victory lap today. Eight points, eight rebounds, flirted with a double double. He had a block that was like an emphatic block, and he was uh, sixteen minutes in this eff- in today's effort. Um, twice I thought he broke the rim. Like two different alley oops, Alberto. I thought he actually broke the rim today. Yeah, yeah. The miners had a few plays at the rim that were just alley oops. Yeah, a lot. beautiful. A lot of them, and, and that's that's exciting to watch. And, and the crowd went crazy, and and the team went crazy, and that was really fun to watch and really fun to. Experience. Well, I got a stat for you. Here you go. Uh, they were eight for nine in dunks, so they made all their dunks. But get this stat: five for sixteen on layups. That's kind of strange. It's a poor layup. That's well, but I would say this. They, they were getting to the free throw line tonight. They, like you uh, highlighted earlier, or Sal highlighted earlier, they just couldn't make the free throws that they wanted to in this matchup. They were uh, 14 of 25. So those layups, some of those misses, I'm, I'm uh, wondering how many of yeah. those they ended up going to the free throw line. And, on. and you know what? This is why it's uh, it's crucial to uh, to make those because last game they were solid when it came to attacking the cup. The game against Liberty they, they couldn't get to the line it was it was hard <laughs> hard for them to do that and you flip it around they're rewarded and they go to the line you know a good amount but they're just not able to cash in and when you kind of look back at that game against Middle Tennessee where um, they, they kind of gave it away they weren't cashing in on those gimmies so piece by piece they're starting to you know kind of check some things off the list but there's going to be a game where they have to you know put it all together and that's going to come up in the conference USA tournament yeah there's going to be games in the tournament where there's no margin for error like they had late in that in that one so uh or in this one I should say uh this is coming in from Shannon good luck to the miners uh coming up um, tonight and good luck to all the seniors. That's coming in from Shannon. So he he is uh, wishing them good luck moving forward. You know the interesting thing. I was talking to John DeSanjos uh, before practice on Thursday, along with Alberto. Uh, he was saying that he hopes for uh, a basketball career in his future. He uh, is, I guess, set to go back to his native country in Brazil. Still is uncertain about what's ahead, but wants to play some basketball here in the future. Uh, Calvin Solomon. He also has some hopes to play some. Uh, you know hoops in the future as well. So I would expect the same from Zid Powell, Tay Hardy. Uh, I've talked a lot to Tay Hardy, and I mean, look, when I was watching him today, Albert, I'm thinking, man, this guy definitely has a international, if it's not here in the states, international pro career ahead of him. Knowing that guys like Shamar Givens is making money playing pro hoops right now, and knowing that Tay Hardy, he's got a lot uh, to his own craft. But um, I'm curious to see what life looks like for these uh, four seniors who are honored tonight. 
yeah, it would be phenomenal for me, at least personally, to see every single one of these guys, if they want to continue a basketball career, to do so in, in, in whatever shape that takes. I mean, if it's coaching or playing overseas, whatever it is, if they want to continue having basketball be a part of their life, I hope that that, that happens for them because they're just they're minors, and, and that's how I feel for them. And, and you know what? Um, speaking on the Dos Anjos thing, I, I personally know through meeting different people from South America that the blacktop basketball scene in South America is extremely big. There's just a lot of a lot of action there. A lot of towns, the smaller towns even, like to have blacktop tournaments and, and different stuff. So there's definitely future in this basketball. It's just about going out there and, and looking for it. And, you know, a senior that I wanted to highlight that, I wanted to highlight because coming into this one, he had four games where he only scored two two points in those four. Each in the last four games, Calvin Solomon only had two points in those sure. in all of those four games. So in this one, Calvin Solomon, you know, in his last game, and he hasn't had the season I know he wanted to have, especially being a senior, being being named to that Conference USA um, early the, the preseason list, and and Calvin Solomon. Look in this one, he had seven points, two assists, two steals. And five rebounds, and I think that's phenomenal a way to you know end your career, yeah. rebound, especially when you hadn't had a performance like that in a while, especially not at home. So you come out, you have a great performance, you you leave it all out there, and you have a great way, you have a, a phenomenal final game in the Don Haskins to look back at. Yeah, I think this stat line right here is a good indication of who Calvin Solomon was to this team. You know, seven points, five rebounds, you love that. That's su- that's really positive. The three turnovers is something that you knock, but the two steals is something that you'll accept defensively because. Uh, it's like I think Sal me- mentioned this earlier on Sports Talk, and I thought it was a really good statement. I, I think I'm going to use this for the rest of the year. High risk, high reward. Calvin Solomon. I think he, uh, when he gives you his best, you can see what he does. And then you know when he turns the ball over and he's careless at times with the ball, that's where you you start to scratch your head and wonder, you know, is is he right now in this stretch a liability, or is he helping us in this stretch here for this basketball team? I think that's what the coaching staff has to kind of think about during stretches and I'm curious to see what kind of uh, minutes he gets in the conference tournament. It's all matchup based for Calvin Solomon because if they go up against a team like they did tonight where he's able to uh, body those bigs, those bigs felt really soft to me and uh, he was able to body those bigs and they, they really didn't have much. Calu did whatever he wanted in that in the, in the front court against those bigs of uh, Florida International and even Derek Hamilton, they only threw it to him twice down low but the two uh, opportunities that he had to make a bucket. Actually, he had three opportunities. He made two of them. Um, you know, he was feasting down low as well. So that's just kind of how I saw it. I think if you know, if you look at Florida International interior wise, they just, they just don't have it. Uh, back to the phones. It's Milkman next. Joining us nine one five five zero five six zero zero nine. If you want to uh, chime in on the show with us, Milkman. Good evening. What's going on? Hey. Good evening. Uh, how, how you guys doing? Hey, we're hanging in, Milkman. Uh, we're talking about a UTEP win. They've won three straight. Where are you at with this team? Well, let me tell you, I am uh, like I was uh, at the last game. I'm I'm cautiously optimistic, and uh, the only reason I emphasize it cautiously was that last ten minutes of the game tonight. But um, man, they 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 still pulled it out, and you know, I <laughs> we're, we're kind of looking at each other like. I can't believe that uh, after a 25 point uh, lead, we're we're kind of sweating it here at the end. But uh, they, I'm I'm very uh, I'm I'm up on them. I'm I'm uh, like like I said, cautiously optimistic. Um, if they can keep playing like this, who knows? Um, like, like I told you last time, if there's a there's a time of the year to get hot. It's March, and they're they're doing. It. So what do you like about this team right now, Milkman? Is it the defense? Do you like how their offense is coming along? You like their guard play, well, the de- front court? I mean, the defense is the defense has been there all year. I mean that that's that that ha- that hasn't let up, thank God. Uh, and you know, defense defense keeps you in games, you know. Um, but uh, God, some of the <laughs> some of the dunks tonight. That I'm I'm trying to find a replay of that dunk from Kalu. Like, uh, uh, excuse me, from um, Hardy. From Tell K. me it's Hardy. Hardy. Tell oh it, the God. one where where he took off like basically that, uh, a foot away from the free throw line. Oh my! God. I, I I was in the stands going, I believe I can fly. I, it was <laughs> unbelievable. Like we were all like, did we just see that? Like that's got to be Sports Center. So, I mean, holy cow! That was 
I know. I know. And, and you know the crazy thing? I was talking to my good pal Diego. He was like, hey, look, um, sometimes Hardy passes these off. Like, he sees the lane right in front of him. And I think he wants to attack it, but sometimes he passes them off. There's also been recent times, this is what my friend Diego was pointing out to me, there's been recent times, Milkman, where Tay Hardy has not gotten up. This sounds weird, but, like, he hasn't leaped as high to actually secure the dunk the way that he wants. But this right. one, he had it from uh, actually mid-court, and he drove all the way. He took one look at the big inside, and he knew it. He knew he was going to take off. He knew he was yeah. going to fly. So, yeah, Ew. this was this was pretty amazing. That dunk was uh, phenomenal. And uh, for Tay Hardy, uh, what, a, what a career night for him. To do it in front of his family, to do it on senior night, that's all you could ask, right? Oh, yeah. T- yeah, totally. Like I said, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend a uh, – my time when I get uh, when I get off the phone here, trying to find a replay of that somewhere. I think I just found I it got- on Twitter and X. So if you Did if you, you follow me, uh, you can you can uh, yeah you can retweet it. I just I just found it. Oh man, it was, <laughs> it was it. that that's the best dunk I've seen all year. I mean that was that was uh, that was some Michael Jordan stuff right there. That was that was amazing. Oh but, man, uh, but I know. Yeah, we're we're definitely uh, I. I like I said, if I had a if I had a preference to be hot at the beginning or at the end, I'll always take the end of the year. So let's see what they can do in the tournament. You know, all, all we can do is uh, is watch. I hear you, man. Hey, I appreciate the phone call, Milkman. Thanks for weighing in on the show. 915-505-6009. If you want to follow up that call, 600 ESPN El Paso on Twitter and X. That's 600 ESPN El Paso. He brings up something really interesting, Adrian. Okay. He, he says, um, I don't know if he said this exactly, but... I'm pretty sure he would agree. Would you say that he had the intention of uh, of meaning that this was the best dunk he's seen all year? I think so. I think that's what he meant. So in that case, I ask you and I ask everybody else, what has been your favorite dunk this year? I think that's it. I you think what, so? what what are the other options? Give me some other ones. I like the dunk that Powell had in um against Santa Barbara. Oh, I remember that one. That one was scary. That was yeah, nice. that was that was a scary dunk, mm-hmm. and that was also a, t- a kind of a posterizer type of dunk. You exactly. know, um, Kalu's had some in, like some really thunderous dunks this year. Um, Otis Frazier has yeah, had some crazy dunks as well through alley oop plays. Um, he's shown his athleticism through some dunks, but this one right here. I mean, just there was a point, there was a game, Sal, and it, it's escaping me the exact game, but where Hardy got up and he actually hit the rim when he was trying to dunk. And I was thinking, what happened? Like, this is not Hardy. Hardy's like high flying, high yeah. jumping kind of guy. And then today, it just um, validates that point. I mean, look at that dunk. That was incredible. Like, going off uh, pretty much from taking the ball from ha- mid court, seeing that guy who's right there in the lane and trusting his own hops to go off and dunk that. I mean, that was pretty special right there. That definitely, may- I sometimes, you know, for big plays, I'll look over at Zay and he'll look at me and we're just like we have like this crazy look at uh you know or I'll look at whoever I'm seeing nearby and stuff like that but that was the one where I I looked at Zay I was like oh my goodness that dunk was absolutely ridiculous I'm happy that I found it on Twitter and X thanks to UTEP guy 56893 uh for posting this one because I just shared it on my end as well it is a fantastic clip hey uh this is coming in right now 600 ESPN El Paso on Twitter um this is coming in right now. I just saw this message. I think it was from Alex. So I'll, I'll get it up here in just a second. But before we do that, let's go back to the phone lines. 915-505-6009. That's our telephone number. 600 ESPN El Paso on Twitter and X and 600 ESPN El Paso uh, on our website. So who do we have on line one? We have Pinky. Let's go to Pinky. Not to and be I confused promise. with Pinkney, right? <laughs> <laughs> now I can say it officially. Pinky, what's up? <laughs> I just feel sorry for George for calling him, him my name. You know, <laughs> he doesn't deserve that. He doesn't deserve that at all. Oh, man. Uh, enjoyable game. Uh, you know, a couple of things. First of all, it's great to see you at, in the in the midcourt getting that, that uh, sponsor of the game, basketball. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was it was nice to uh, you know be alongside Brad Debo, our president uh, here at Town Square Media El Paso, and accept the game ball tonight, uh, signed by head coach Joe Golding and Keith Adams. So I like it. 
Okay, okay, now let's get to the game. A good crowd, not bad, very good. At least some of the students actually showed up, which is great. Um, real quick, from my point of view, um, free throws again, a couple of bad passes again, but uh, I think what uh, mostly everything that everybody was talking about was basically the free throws and the, the bad passing. My point is, is, and I don't know if you read it, what I sent you was, how come they don't run the baseline after the, the other team scores a basket? He's just standing there waiting for the guys to do that something. That must be a I'm philosophy, going. right? Because they've never really done it. I, I mean, I'm just that's what I'm guessing, right? Because other teams they'll they'll opt into doing it right away. But other, you know, what you saw from UTEP today, they of course they didn't do that. They they went and and they had they were still at the baseline. I think that frustrated fans, but at the same time, um, you know, I I just didn't feel like they were in any bit of an issue or any bit of hurt. Did you actually? get worried about the minors down the stretch, Pinky? Look, man, I've been a minor fan a long time when I yeah, see a I lot of so. crazy stuff happen at the game. So, I hear you me. know, to me, I'm, I, I, I'll throw the yogiism out there. It's not over till it's over. Nah, I hear you. You know, sim- simple as that. But, uh, yeah, that that's, you know, free throws uh, didn't help any uh, down at the stretch of the game and stuff. But, you know, I just had a little couple of questions like that. But everything was great. It was good. Good victory. You know, let's see what happens now. I'm pulling. Well, I'm optimistic, like everybody, mostly everybody else, I think. But you know, they won. They won three in a row, and and you know, you're playing good ball. But it was great to see all you guys out there. Everybody that was out there. Great to see everybody that I saw. And and you know, it's too bad it's the end of the season. So I guess I'm gonna. That was my last time I wore my plate, my necklace. This year, I guess. No, not Until this year. I, I, uh, September. It's uh, right around the corner, I mean, my friend. I mean, I mean this, this, this season. This, this season. There season. you go. Yeah. Hey, good uh, stuff, I Pinky. It. It's great to talk to you, man. It was great to see you out at the District West. I appreciate it. Uh, 3233 North Mesa is where we were at at the District, and it was awesome to be out there today. We had a great crowd, great showing, and appreciated everybody stopping by. Let's go back to Twitter and X. Chuko Wayne, at Chuko J. Wayne. Uh, sends us this. Tonight's game reminded me that UTEP's early season energy. With all the dunks and all the alley-oops, let's go Miners. Don't let off the gas pedal. This is coming from Alex at the Sun King 11. This team has been awesome to watch when they click, but they go on spurts And that's not optimistic. They're not consistent through an entire game, and in March you have to be. Hope they make a run, but not expecting one. I say one and done in Huntsville, Alabama. Back to our poll, cautiously optimistic is up 41%. Uh, UTEP will make a run is up to 34%. So those are two uh, in the lead right now here as we continue on our Minor Talk poll. 915-505-6009-600 ESPN will on Twitter and X. Let's do this. Let's take a timeout, our one and only timeout of the show. When we come back, we've got awards to give out and we've got more phone calls and tweets to talk about here as uh, Minor Talk continues. We're presented by the Oscar Arieta Agency. More in a moment coming up here on 600 ESPN El Paso. Welcome back. Minor Talk continues here, presented by the Oscar Adietta Agency. Our hot hand of the game brought to you by Wind Supply El Paso is coming up. And same with our uh, player of the game, thanks to uh, Timothy Cantrell. Our telephone number, if you want to weigh in, 915-505-6009. Joe Chacon with a series of posts. Okay, hear me out. After this very brief exchange between coaches, it looks like some words were said between Jeremy Ballard and Joe Golding. The game all of a sudden changed, and it became closer than we wanted. I'm not one for conspiracies, but it seems coincidental that UTEP being up so much just bleeped the bed. Excuse my French. I'd like to know what Joe Golding and the FIU coach said at this moment. It caught my eye and I watched it unfold. That is just my perspective. It may have been the fluff but uh, to you all, but maybe ESPN said that we need something closer. I am happy that the team is getting hot at the right time, and it is not too far-fetched that this team wins the tournament and ends up a 13 or 14 seed in the big dance. Yep. I said it. Hashtag repping from Colorado now. Hashtag fingers crossed for a snow day tomorrow. Good stuff, dude. Um, this is uh, hashtag not to be confused with macho madness. 
<laughs> Snap into a Slim Jim. Hashtag so much info in this tweet. Uh, I don't know about the, the whole exchange and all that kind of stuff, but I'll go back on the ESPN Plus tape and watch it. Joe Chacon, so thanks for pointing it out. Um, as far as what you say, uh, it's not too far-fetched to say that UTEP can win the tournament and go dancing. Do you think it's far-fetched to say that, Sal? Uh, what well, yes. can you? Yeah, I think I think Come to on. use the right uh, word, it'd still be surprising, right? Yeah. I came on this show two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever it was, and said I was completely out on this team. I was just I, I was so done with them. And you know what, Joe Golding, to his credit, he maintained that he had confidence in this team. He felt like there was a rallying point with this team, and they got to that point. So credit to him for always staying the course and for this team for being resilient at this point. They were four. They lost four straight. I didn't even think they would win a single game to close out the year except for this one tonight so I thought they would close out the year on a losing six of their last seven yet they win their last three and that includes two on the road against Jacksonville State and Liberty what does that mean I don't know when the uh, when the whole conference standings shake out if those teams that those three teams that they beat are in the bottom half of conference USA I don't know if that makes me feel differently about it knowing that hey it doesn't matter which competition it is this league is pretty uh, even uh, on an even playing field right now as it stands, I still think I would be shocked. Or no, I'm, I don't think I know. I would be shocked if UTEP won the conference USA tournament. I just would, knowing yeah. what we've seen this year. I now do. Can I say it's impossible right now? No, there is some possibility behind it, and I like the confidence that Joe Golding and this team has. I love the way that he answered those questions late in that, and he and he feels confident going into Huntsville next week. It's just about getting that first game, according to Joe Golding. I'm good with all of that right there. I love the confidence. I love the swagger. I love the idea. And you have to have that kind of belief in order to be a, a team here in Conference USA. That's just the bottom line, Sal. The, yeah, the, the Ducks are in a row right now. They, everything that they're doing right now is what's leading them to win these games, right? They're, they're more efficient. I know today they didn't take um, great care of the ball, you know, at, at a good part of time. But they did other things to kind of trump that, that um, you know, down yeah. part on their play today. So this this team, I think they're they're playing to what they do best, and that's utilizing their athleticism, specifically on the on the defensive end. But on offense, they're trying to get to the rim as much as possible. The, there's no other way that they can play, in my opinion, that would warrant them, um, you know, potential wins. It's just a matter of of them executing at the end of the day. If if they do that, they can pretty much outrun whoever it is they're going up against in Conference USA. But that's a you got to be perfect in that regard. If you're going to ask me is everybody beatable, I'd say yes. Everybody is beatable in Conference USA. But if you're going to ask me is UTEP going to win this conference and go on a run, I would just say as of right now, I can't say that. I can't answer that um, in the favor of the Miners. I would probably still side with one of the favorites like La Tech or Sam Houston Sam State Houston, as yeah. it stands right now. So does that mean that they can't make a run? No, of course not. They can make a run. And um, where I'm at with this team is it's all matchup based. I think they could beat Middle Tennessee. If that's their matchup in the first round, I think they go and at least play a Friday matchup against Sam Houston State. And in that one, who knows? I mean, that one is just up for grabs. So you can just uh, tell me either way, whichever side this ends up going, I would believe it. You know, And, and you know what, too? I, I think w- what I really want to hammer in as well is – I don't think we'd be surprised at all if this team is competing and, you know, they happen to bow out in the Conference USA tournament in a tight one to a team that played better pretty much all year. We expect them to compete with Sam Houston and Louisiana Tech. They did it. Yeah, <laughs> they that's did true. It this year. They did it it's this just year. a matter of coming out on top. They haven't done it against some of the better teams in Conference USA. That's where that difference is. 915-505-6009 as we start to wind things down here on the show. 600 ESPN El Paso on Twitter and X. I appreciate all the uh, phone calls. Appreciate um, you know the support that we had at the district earlier today, and appreciate all the people chiming in today and uh, you know s- giving us uh, their thoughts. Um, let's go back to the poll. We're starting to wind things down. The poll right now is saying that. of the people are cautiously optimistic about UTEP. 33% say UTEP will make a run. There are uh, 16% of the voters who say UTEP will go one and done in Alabama, and only 7% of the votes say that they are out on this team. Um, 
that would indicate that fans have the glass half full right now mentality uh, for UTEP going into Huntsville, Alabama. Let's go out to our awards here on the show, and then we're going to preview what's ahead for the conference tournament. And, of course, we'll put a bow on this one and get you ready uh, for another edition of Sports Talk coming up tomorrow. It's on deck. UTEP defeats FIU tonight, 83-76. Hot hand of the game. Let's give it to Zid Powell. 17, all 17 points in the second half. He was... uh, Man, 7 for 10 from the field in the second half alone. Filled up the stat sheet, 6 rebounds, 5 assists, a very productive game from Zid Powell. 29 minutes in this one in a starting effort. He is the hot hand of the game tonight uh, for UTEP. And speaking of our hot hand, uh, big shout out to Wind Supply El Paso. Hey, if you're looking to work with a reliable wholesale HVAC system supplier, look no further. It's Wind Supply El Paso. They work with great people like Master Cool the Champion Heating and Cooling products, uh, and they have so much more. To locate your nearest Champion dealer, visit the Find a Dealer tab online today at windsupplyelpaso.com or give them a call, 915-859-3817. That's 915-859-3817 for Win Supply El Paso. Now it's time for our Timothy Cantrell player of the game. There's no question about this one. It's Tay Hardy. Tay Hardy gets the uh, player of the game award, and it's not even close. Look at the performance he had tonight. 26 points, 9 for 3 from the field, 6 three-pointers made. He also contributed with 5 assists, co-led the group alongside Zid Powell and, of course, Otis Frazier III and had, get this, only 2 turnovers and 32 minutes of action. Tay Hardy, what a performance, what a career, what a season for him. Uh, He is on his way to becoming an all-conference player in in this league and uh, he should be recognized here in the postseason awards for sure no doubt about it in my mind. He is our player of the game tonight, and that is brought to you by Timothy Cantrell. Hey, if you're looking for a trusted real estate agent in El Paso that's not going to uh, you know, waste your time and that's going to give you accurate and efficient results, it's Timothy Cantrell. You're looking to buy or sell your home? It's Timothy Cantrell. Uh, you could check him out on his Facebook, at Timothy Cantrell Realtor. Check him out on Instagram, same page, Timothy Cantrell Realtor as well, and uh, he is somebody that you could rely on for all your professional real estate needs. Give them a call, 915-204-8441. That's 915-204-8441. And really appreciate Timothy Cantrell joining us for our Player of the Game Award all season long here on Minor Talk. Well, guys, time to turn the page. Huntsville, Alabama. It's time for Conference USA tournament action. Sal, uh, you and I, throughout our minor talk career, I think we've only seen one win in the conference tournament. And I'm gonna do who just. Who was it? I don't even know who it was. It was the 2022 season, first year under head coach Joe Golding. They defeated Old Dominion 74-64 okay. uh, in Frisco, Texas. So that was the last uh, and only UTEP victory we've seen uh, as covering minor wow. talk um, for men's basketball. That might be the only. Oh, how about this? How about this? Over under two and a half. Conference USA tournament wins the last six years. Oh, under. Yeah. Under. That's how it's been. Under, yeah. So I'm shocked. Uh, Yeah, under. I I just, you know what? I mean, remember, UTEP was struggling to get in the conference tournament. There was a year they didn't even make it. There was a year they didn't make it under Rodney Terry, and they they struggled to get in that conference tournament certain years. So I would say that, you know, when you talk about this UTEP basketball team, just getting to the conference tournament uh, was a grind for them. Like 2015, 2016, 2018, you know, that run, like the late 2010s, it was uh, much more difficult. And then when they made it automatic, everybody makes it. In, then UTEP was uh, trying to not get bounced out early on or just bow out in the first round of the tournament. Um, let's do prediction time. I have If it's UTEP versus Middle Tennessee, I have UTEP winning in the first round uh, of the conference tournament. What do you think, Alberto? I'll swing it to you. Yeah, I think if they get Middle Tennessee, and they're going to have to avenge that six-point overtime loss where they usually yes. kind of went cold. and that, that should be on the forefront of your mind or your memory, and you should come out like you did today, except you don't you don't let up. So that's what I'm expecting. Like you said, if Middle Tennessee goes out there, and these guys are hungry. They, they want to prove people wrong, and, and that mentality usually gives good things. Uh, Sal. You Ooh. know what, Adrian? It's, uh, it's tough. 
I got to think about this, so let's pause 10 seconds for station identification for your anticipation of UTEP's participation in the Conference USA Tournament on 600 years Pino Paso. All right, and we're back here on Minor Talk. Uh, to answer the question, I, I think they do get the uh, the quarter win, um, but bow out in the semis. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I like it. Um, we'll be back next week, Thursday edition of uh, uh, UTEP Basketball. Uh, women's basketball could be heard here on 600 ESPN El Paso as well in the CUSA tournament. And uh, Sal will be up uh, next week. We're ready to go. Let's do it. And uh, speaking of UTEP women's basketball, uh, they did fall today to right. uh, Florida International, a, a solid team in Conference USA. Let me uh, just make sure I have the score pulled up here. I kind of don't want to. I've got 88-62. There we go, 88-62. And um, FIU kind of, you know, just routed from early on up until the end. But a cool moment, though. One of my old classmates and former UTEP women's basketball player, Marta Oletska. I'm pretty sure you all might yeah. remember her. But uh, she, she put this on social media earlier. She said, full circle moment. We played in Miami 10 years ago. And now I get to watch UTEP play with my son and call Miami oh, home. Oh, that's cool. Forever nice. grateful for uh, for Coach Laskowska. Quite literally wouldn't be here without you. So. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Wanted to give Man. a shout out to uh, to Martha there and uh, the Utah women's basketball team. Good stuff there, Sal. I like that a lot. Um, we'll see what happens with the women's basketball team as it stands right now. If the season ended today, they'd be a sixth seed. That means they would play two o'clock out in Huntsville, Alabama, on March fourteenth. So um, keep an eye out. We'll we'll uh, post all our po- uh, you know all our programming um, updates next week as we continue here uh, ahead of the conference tournament out in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, I I think that's going to wind things up here on the show for us, guys. I really appreciate all the listeners, appreciate everybody chiming in, and appreciate uh, those who are subscribing to us on our podcast channel. In fact, if you aren't subscribing to Minor Talk, uh, wherever you listen to Minor Talk On Demand, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever it is, go out, check it out, uh, listen to us on demand, like and review us. If you've listened to us over the years, uh, please consider liking, sharing, reviewing us on our On Demand channels. It's uh, always a treat when we get to see some of those comments there. Hey, I appreciate Sal Montes, appreciate Alberto Retta, appreciate Zay Galindo. He was out at the Don Haskins Center tonight. He's got a ch- uh, track meet for Chapin tomorrow, uh, so best of luck for uh, to him for that one, and we will be back in action next week uh, when UTEP goes out to Huntsville, Alabama. Great show tonight. Uh, we'll be back in action next week for all of us here. Thanks for listening to Minor Talk presented by the Oscar Arieta Agency. More next week here on 600 ESPN El Paso.